about 20 miles from Benin City, present-day Edo State. He migrated to Benin at an early age, learned to drive, and became a skilled taxi driver. He became known in Benin motor parks as a man who could control the varied competing interests among motor park touts and operators. He later delved into the criminal business in the city and soon became a driver and transporter for gangs, criminals, godfathers and thieves. Later on, he decided to create his own gang, which include Monde Osumbo, Ufege and others. And they started out as car hijackers, bus robbers and bank thieves. Gradually, he extended his criminal act to other towns and cities far north and east of Benin. His complicity with the Nigerian police is believed to have triggered Amini's reign of terror in 1986. In 1986, two members of his gang were tried and prosecuted against an earlier under the table agre agreement with the police to destroy evidence against the gang members. The incident and Amini's view of police betrayal is believed to have spurred retaliatory actions by him. In an operation in August of 1986, the Anini team struck at First Bank in Sabungida Ora, where they carted away 2,000 naira. But although the amount stolen was seen as chicken feed, they left the scene with a trail of blood. Many persons were killed. Then on September 6, same year, the Anini's gang snatched the Peugeot 504 from Albert Otto, the driver of an assistant inspector general of police, Christopher Omebe. In snatching the car, they killed the driver and went to hide his corpse somewhere. It was not until three months later that the skeleton of the driver was spotted 16 kilometers away from Benin along the Benin Amor Highway. A day after this attack, Anini operating in a Passat car, believed to have been stolen also, effected the snatching of another Peugeot 504 car near the former Fedeco office in Benin. Worried by the seemingly elusiveness of Anini and his gang members, the then military president, General Ibrahim Babangida, ordered a massive manhunt for the kingpin and his fellow robbers. Anini was so bold that everyone wanted his head on a stake. The police went after them, combing every part of Bendel State where they were reportedly operating and living. The whole nation was gripped with fear of the robbers and their daredevil exploits. However, police manhunt failed to stop their activities. The more they were hunted, the more intensified their activities became. Some of the locals in the area were beginning to tell stories of their invisibility and for a while it felt like they were never going to be caught. At about this time, Nigerian newspapers and journals were also publishing various reports and editorials on the Anini Challenge, Anini Saga, Anini Factor, Lawrence Anini, the man, the meat, Anini, Jack Ripper, and Lawrence Anini, the Robin Hood in Bendel. Finally, it took the courage of Superintendent of Police Kayode Urerero to bring the Anini reign of terror to an end. On that day, December 3rd of 1986, Kayode led a crack 10-man team to the house. He knocked on the door of the room and Anini himself, in his underpants, opened the door and behold, this man was facing a policeman and he had no place to run. Kayode did not really identify him, he didn't know him physically, so he asked him, where is Anini? Anini tried to be smart and he said, oh, Anini is under the bed in the inner room. As he said that, he made some moves to walk past Kayode and his team. In the process, but Kayode pushed him back and said, well, you have to go and show us where he is. As he said that, and he made some moves to walk past Kayode and his team, in the process, he shoved and headbutted the police officer. So Kayode reached for his gun, stepped hard on Anini's toes, and shot at his left ankle. Anini surged forward, but the policeman took hold of him and put him in a sitting position. Already in deep pain, the policeman asked him again, Are you Anini? And he replied, my brother, I won't deceive you. I won't tell you a lie. I am Anini. Anini was shot in the leg, transferred to a military hospital, and had one of his legs amputated. When Anini's hideout was searched, police recovered assorted charms, including one he, he usually wear around his waist during operations. Due to the amputation of Anini's leg, 
He was confined to a wheelchair throughout his trial. He was sentenced to death by Justice James Omo Agege and executed on March 29, 1987. During his execution, and then he took a good look at the executioners, struggling to turn his neck and body as he was firmly tied on the stake. Then they asked him if he had anything to say. And then Peter Danini was overtaken with rage and he thundered, My friend and his boys will revenge my death. But the executioners, who did not know who he was ranting about, thought it was just the paranoid prattle of a man facing a sure death. They thought Anini was just delusional and were not even interested in any friend of his, if indeed he had any. Their job was to escort him to the border between this world and next. They paid the ultimate price. Oof, what a man. That's all I have for you guys today. Be sure to watch my other videos with similar stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a good day.